Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about what polyatomic ions are and how they tie into what we talk about in chemistry. So take a look down here at the presentation. It's been a while since I've done a video, so uh, kind of bear with me here and we'll get into it here quickly. What is a polyatomic ion? These are things that I've kind of saved for later in our science course because polyatomic ions are, you need to have a basis, let's say, of what atoms are and what elements are and how what compounds are and then build on that and talk about what ions are and we know that ions are things that have charges and when we look at a polyatomic ion we break that word down poly means multiple or more than one so we're talking about two three or maybe more atoms okay and we know where we get those atoms from on the periodic table so um, essentially we look at having multiple atoms combining together to kind of form an ion. And an ion is, let's just stick with the definition of something that is charged. And this is really important. If we put those things all together, we can look at multiple atoms that have a charge. And what that looks like exactly, maybe I'll, I'll throw an example out there. So maybe I will look at something like the polyatomic ion that we know as sulfate. Sulfate is SO4 with a two negative charge. So you can see here, if we look at the multiple atoms that are present, is we have sulfur here, we have four oxygens. Those are acting together as an ion with an overall two negative charge. Okay, so that is an example of the polyatomic ion. And then we can break that down and we can look at so many other examples of polyatomic ions. There's a big list usually that I give my students. I don't expect them to memorize that. But what I do expect is that they are able to use those. So they don't have to memorize them because they can look at the list, but they definitely have to be able to um, use those. And a, a couple things about these. If we look at polyatomic ions, we say, okay, one, they are multiple atoms acting together as a unit. So maybe we'll add that. Multiple atoms acting as one charged unit, whatever we want to say. I'm also going to say, give you a few tips here. Be very careful that you have the correct polyatomic ion. So don't change the name and don't change the charge that's there as well. So what I'm going to say in brackets is just be careful that you're looking at the correct name of something like sulfate versus something like sulfite. Okay, so sulfate and sulfite are very, very similar. What you're going to see is sulfate, as we described before, was SO4 2 minus. What actually happens is there's something called sulfite. Hopefully this isn't confusing you here, but I just want you to be aware that, oops, sorry. I just want you to be aware that very little differences. You can see that they have the exact same charge. The only difference between sulfate and sulfite other than the spelling is basically you have four oxygens in sulfate and you have three oxygens in sulfite. So just be very careful that you recognize polyatomic ions as multiple atoms acting as one and two, that they don't change uh, their name. If we're talking about sulfate, we're talking specifically about that and they don't change their charge. They're always going to see sulfate as an SO4 two negative charge and sulfite as an SO3 two negative charge. So let's jump over into an example here and I'm asking you to write the name for NaOH. And one thing I should always say is I like it when my students write uh, their polyatomic ion in brackets. That doesn't have to happen, but I find it so much easier for organization and identification purposes that I really tell my students to do that. So write the name for NaOH. Let's look at this in a little bit more detail here. The first thing that I like to do is I like to look at what my cation or my metal, the positive charged ion is. And I say that this is Na and it has a one plus charge. I know that 
uh, from looking at the periodic table. And then I can look at what my anion, whoa, I can look at my anion here, and I say this is OH, and what do I know about OH? Well, I know that one, it's two atoms that are acting together as one. It comes from a list that we know. We know it's on the list of our polyatomic ions list, which for my class is on the back of their periodic table. Um, and I know that it has a one minus charge. What we call this, the fancy name for it is, we call this the hydroxide ion. And so that's my name. And I also know that the name of my uh, metal, Na+, plus, or the ion, the cation, in this case is sodium. So when I put that full name together, the correct name for NaOH equals sodium hydroxide. All right, that's the correct name for NaOH. Last example here is we're going to write the formula for potassium sulfate. All right, so for this, what I will do is I will write it out again, just so for organization purposes, potassium, here we're talking about sulfate again. And then from there, I'll break that down. I'll say potassium. Potassium symbol is K. It's in group one, so it has a plus one charge. From there further, I'll go ahead and look at sulfate. Sulfate is SO4, and it's a polyatomic ion, so I put my brackets around it, and it has a negative two charge. That negative two re charge represents that entire sulfate ion. And if we look at this right now, between potassium and sulfate, I know that right now, um, these charges aren't going to balance out. For example, if I was to put one potassium with one sulfate, uh, what I'm actually going to see now is we are looking at the charges down below. We have a two plus charge and overall we have a, a one plus charge. If we were to split these things up, that's not good for us. We want those to be balanced. We want it to be balanced so that we have a two plus charge and a two negative charge, which makes our overall compound neutral. And so in order to do that, I'm going to have to come up here and add in two potassiums. So I hope that video helped. Again, it's my first video in a very long time. Um, so if it helped, that's great. Please hit the thumbs up button and click subscribe down below and uh, let us know if you have any video topics that you would like to see and I'll do my best to help you. Thanks for watching.